Hello, beloveds. I'm so happy to be here today. Uh, I'm healing. Everything is coming back to normal. I feel my strength coming back, and I'm just so happy to be here with you. And thank you so much for being so patient with me and being here as we grow and go on our journey together. Today, I wanted to come here and provide some helpful information experiences for you. Uh, if you have your altar up, this information is for people that already have their ancestral altar up. Uh, they have been putting food on there. They have put water on there. They have put flowers on their altar. They have been trying to develop a closer relationship with their ancestors. They're not sure what they should be doing. How can they uh, be more intimate? Excuse me, with their ancestors to have more communication, clear communication with their ancestors. They want to know how to increase their intuition. What can increase their intuition? You know, uh, you want to work closer with hoodoo, you know, with your ancestors with hoodoo. You want to know how that works and how to incorporate that. I'm going to be talking about that a little bit more here in uh, my video. And I'm also working on a, a kind of uh, a course, a doable course that you can you can get some use some of those skills uh, in creating your own ancestral system or strengthening your own ancestral system. So I'm really thinking about a, a course in that and what has really helped me teaching some of the things that really helped me on my journey. OK, so. Uh, you've been putting your, your stuff on your altar. You've had your altar up for a while. And you're like, man, I, I don't know where I'm at with my ancestors. I'm not really sure about the feedback I'm getting or how to improve the feedback that I'm getting. Uh, to really have the confidence that you are communicating with your ancestors. Okay, so I referred some books to you guys about working with your ancestors. And I think the most important thing we can do if we want to uh, get some answers from our ancestors, and sometimes it's not the immediate ancestors, and sometimes it is the immediate ancestors. It may be, be different for some of us, but for me, and you've heard me talk about that, and I'm going to talk about it again, is the importance of connecting with land ancestors because they know the story and people of color remember you have been on this land longer than what they're telling you yes they bought some of our kin over here who were african who sir uh, who um had some of the similar spiritual practices and yeah we have this hoodoo that's rich with african and indeed just or Native American spiritual practices in it. Yes, we, we have this relationship what's going on. But we want to go by the relationship that we have with the land. Because when we look at the land, the land tells us that these indigenous cultures were already communicating and they were already here. They were not isolated or divided away from each other. They were in communication with each other and that's why some of the indigenous practices seems to be very similar or sometimes identical to each other. Okay, so if you have a person of color, we have to trust the story of the land, of the mounds that we see here, the Grand Canyon, those watermarks. You know, we have to look at these monuments that, that was already here. They're not even telling us that was connected to our ancestors and this land. Archaeologist is going to tell, give you a, you know, if you don't can't follow history, go to archaeology because archaeology is going to talk about that nature art culture It's going to talk about these similarities with these different cultures and how they were way away from each other. And how could they have some similar identical spiritual practices? That's because they were already in communication with each other. We were already traveling the globe here in turtle island and area part uh, other parts of the uh, world so uh, i recommend that you go out 
and listen to the land and look at the land and go to those archaeological historical sites and 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 do your research and you'll see you were already here. I, I had a phenomenal experience with the ancestors uh, when I went to Toltec Mounds and I go to Willow Beach Park. They tell me we were, the land clearly talks to me. It clearly talks to me. It has a voice. The, the ancestors on that land have a voice. Look at the landscape. That's why import, it is important. Once you connect with the land, you're going to be able to interface with hoodoo a lot better. You're going to understand your relationship with the plants. You're going to understand your relationship with water. You're going to understand your relationship with fire. You're going to understand your relationship with nature. Okay, once you connect with that land, it will all make sense and hoodoo becomes so much easier to you. You start to see everything is alive and everything is magic. Magic is in everything. You can use everything from magic to dirt, you know, on down from the dirt to the water that comes out of the sky. Everything has magical property to it if you know how to use it. That's when your hoodoo come in at. And another thing... Uh, to understanding that hoodoo is older than what they're telling us. It's more than the Native Americans and the uh, Africans coming over here sharing their spiritual knowledge. It's way older than that. In fact, it goes all the way back to ancient Egypt. When you see uh, Sad Horus, you know, Osiris, when you see her, you know, putting him back together again, this is hoodoo. That was her hoodoo. You understand? You see it, and it wasn't even a call that. That's how that all it was because it wasn't called that. It was just things that we did in our family with plant medicine, spiritual, uh, spirituality that worked for us. Okay, you'll see it different in different families, especially different uh, people of color. Uh, you're connected back to the most indigenous cultures when you do practice hoodoo okay and you will get that when you start to connect with the land another ancestors you know that it's important to and i think we tend to dismiss that i don't see i i, I hear people talk about it but not in the relation probably that i'm going to talk about it. i don't hear a lot of people talk about it in the relation that i'm going to talk about it you have star ancestors too from where your soul come from. You have ancestors that come from a unique star where your soul was created to go into your familia and represent those star ancestors as well. Okay, you have star ancestors as well. And you'll see them come into play, place, especially when you see the cycles. Different cycles come in, different full moons that come in. Those ancestors can mark great big changes that come in your life. Especially when it comes to working with the signs of the moon or different stars or eclipses. Uh, you'll have those, those star ancestors working with frequencies. You'll have those star and those soul and uh, I call them you can call them soul family, your star ancestors, but you have them as well that's watching after you where your soul has a bigger purpose. And that they usually get you usually get your orders from those soul ancestors, those star ancestors to make the evolution changes within the family that you're born in. It goes deep with this ancestors thing. It goes very, very deep uh, with the ancestors things. Opening your mind to what you think is ancestors. Another good book uh, to read. I think Voodoo is really understanding. Voodoo gives you a really good description of ancestor because when you're looking at the Orisha. When you're looking at Voodoo, you're looking at ancestral spirits. 
It's something for you to really understand when we're looking, because you're looking at these personalities. When we're understanding Voodoo, when we're understanding Orisha or any indigenous practices, we are being introduced to them as personalities, letting you know this is some sort of ancestral spirit. You know, I talked about this in another book review, but I, I want to stay on target <laughs> with your advanced study with communicating with the ancestors and evolving your practice with your ancestors. This is a really good book that it will help you understand truly what the ancestors are before you even move on to the Orishas, before you even move on to um, communicating with, with voodoo deities. Once you can under understand the ancestors, you can work with the deities. You can be guided to work with the deities a lot better once you understand how to work with ancestors. Okay. Another thing that you're going to have to do, which I, you know, doing that shadow work, the healing ancestral karma. Doing the path working. If you've been on my channel for a while, you know that. I'm really, there's some meditations here, and I'm really big on path working. I really think, for me, in my opinion, and been my experience, path working, because this is like shamanic work, working with ancestors, to me, is a lot like doing shamanic work, having the journey, doing the path working, and working with ancestors. And if you've uh, used any of the meditations here, on this channel, you know you've had an experience with, one, with at least one of our meditations where you've had a profound experience with your ancestors because of the way that the meditation was created. And I try to create meditations that are path working, that are real, that help you have a profound meditation experience, especially when it comes to your ancestors. That's very important. Now, scientists say that we only use 10% of our brains. I am confirmed as a metaphysician and some other metaphysicians agree and quantum physics agree that with the other 90% of our brain, we are creating our uh, reality in the astral plane. So the astral plane is very, very real. And that is the place where you're going to be meeting your ancestors when it comes to creating change and healing in your work. You know, you're going to have to be able to identify with that astral realm because that is more real than the reality, slow down physical reality that you're experiencing. That is the collective consciousness where we can go in and create the change that we want to experience or get the healing, you know, that we need to have to be healthy. Is being able to navigate that astral realm. And I'm going to be talking a little bit more about path working uh, probably in the next month or so. Real soon, I'm going to really get deeper with the path working because I talked about Carl Jung and the archetypes of the mind and how the mind has the natural ability to heal itself if we learn how to let go and keep an open mind and let our minds uh, Offer us this healing by creating this sort of path working, a guide that creates a scenario that will help us increase our intuition and to bring in more healing and to have this sort of communication and relationship with our ancestors. You can do this through meditation, creative visualization, meditation, path working. Uh, it's a type of shamanic practice that has yielded great results for many of our ancestors. And it's a very ancient practice that anyone is capable of using if you are able to go ahead and use your creative imagination and visualization. I've seen I've had great results with it. And so I'm going to talk about that too, probably in the weeks to come. We're going to go over that a little bit more. Uh, and I really want to, like I say, I really want to learn. Uh, I really want to put something together and teach you how to do it. Uh, in a course. And that way you can, it'll really help your ancestral system and communicate with your ancestors. But we're going to be talking about other mediums as well. So doing that shadow work, 
doing their ancestral karma because through chattel slavery on both sides, our ancestors and their ancestors, we have to do our work. We have to get rid of you. We inherited trauma. It's in your family, whether you want to look at it or not. Now it's not the time to go into the now uh, cognitive denizens. It's not time to do that. It's time to look at how this trauma affected and rippled out into our families and affected us in some sort of way. I had to look at it, too, when I started doing my work. Even though there was personal abuse and stuff I I, I experienced in my family, I still had to look at how this other trauma created other family dysfunction in my family. You know, it created that. So doing that work and seeing connecting to dots and doing that work and changing that frequency is important. That's going to that's going to really yield great results and improve your goals where you're trying to go. The healing, you know, that your ancestors needs is going to bring ease. And so many gifts and talents doing this work. And a lot of people don't want to talk about this, but this is important. So if you got your altar up and you haven't been doing this work, you're not doing yourself. You're doing yourself a disservice. Please do the work. It's going to improve everything. Okay. Uh, communing with the ancestors. This was a good book. Uh, give you a, a brief descriptions of how the uh, ancestors show up in our lives. You know, how they can manifest in our lives. This is a good one. Badass ancestors, you know, showing you there are allies, how they can be allies in our life and how to work with them. You know, uh, there's a lot of remedies in this book, too. OK, there's a lot of remedies in this book. It's, this, this is a good book. My favorite book. I think it's two books here is my favorite. It is this book here and Ancestral Magic by V.V. Gunn. These are my two favorite books. Out of all of these books, all of them are good. These are my two favorite books out of all, all of this because I understand the ancestors. We're getting back to a system of our ancestors and your ancestral veneration. It is our own magic and our own going, coming back home to what we truly are. And that that's what I like about this book, Ancestral Magic. And what I like about this is the healing, the healing modalities that's in this book. Uh, for our ancestors and the steps that we can take when we don't have healthy immediate families that passed over. We don't have healthy ancestors and how to go out and use the ancestors of the land. Okay. Um, and this was a, a, a really good book too. Okay. Honoring ancestors. Under your ancestors, a guide to ancestral veneration. This is a really good book as well. Again, these are good general books to give you an idea of how ancestors can show up in your life. Uh, and when I start connecting with land ancestors, it was it was it was almost by it was connecting with nature that I came in contact with the ancestors on the land. And that's when I start doing a lot of rituals outside. And leaving offerings outside to those ancestors on the land and communicating with them. Uh, and the, the energy that I felt was so strong and powerful uh, that I knew that, you know, I, I, they were definitely allies. Uh, I became drawn to, you know, this type. Of stuff. This is some sort of totem, a thunderbird totem uh, that the ancestors. I was moved to buy this thunderbird totem. You know, I keep it on my altar. And this is this this is about the ancestors on this land. I they immediately start contacting me, and I was I was following my intuition. Okay. Uh, when I start doing shamanic work, learning more about path working and asking them, hey, is this what I'm supposed to be doing? Because I was having these profound meditation experiences. I knew I was having a 
coming in contact with spirit. And I asked for a sign. This woman from Florida bought me this tall tech dagger. She didn't know me from a can of paint. And she bought me this tall tech obsidian dagger. Okay, so immediately the ancestors on this land, would, they start immediately uh, communicating with me. Yeah, the ancestors on this land. I haven't had any um, ancestors, you know, I don't think from Africa yet. Uh, maybe I have with the deities that I do work with. Uh, let me, I probably want to take that back. But yes, the ancestors on this land immediately start communicating with me. Uh, what is this one? I got to read this name. And it almost looked like, it sound almost like, it reminds me of a, a comedic name. His name was Kamiha Miha. Kamiha Miha. Uh, yes, he called out to me. Look at this. This, 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 uh, he was a political... A figure here, an indigenous political figure that united the islands of Hawaii and strengthened his culture, his community, his people. You know, I, I you know, and he, I, I went around the store and he just kept saying, "Get me," because it don't, you know, I'm your ancestors. Don't try to figure it out. Okay. And I did my little research on him, and he was a very, he was a revolutionary. He was a revolutionary, you know. Yeah, he was a, a, a activist. You know, he had a very challenging time trying to uh, bring unity to his people. His name is K Ma He Ma. You can't see the letter is. It's written down there at the bottom. I don't think you can see it. You see it? You see the name? It's at the bottom. And he just kept hollering my name. He kept hollering my name. He kept saying, take me with you. I'm your ancestors. Don't try to figure it out. You'll understand later. And this is he's indigenous to Hawaii. So these artifacts, they begin to call out to me. You know, I always trust my intuition. Uh, uh, on this path, uh, I've had to trust my intuition. And this was definitely a sign because this is when I asked the ancestors a sign that I'm supposed to be doing shamanic practices in improving my communication with them is that is that the work i need to be doing and this woman knocked on my door and gave me a black toe tag toe tag uh dagger obsidian dagger and i've had it for a couple of years now okay uh another medium that i use uh i use these cards postcard from spirits i love these I love these cards because they give me affirmation and they give me confirmation on all the readings I do. As I always pull these last after I give myself a reading because they'll confirm a reading. They'll, they'll And they will even confirm some of the path working that I do in meditation. It confirms what the ancestors was talking to me a bit about. It just put more, it just, it confirmed the words, what they told me. So these are really good uh, cards as well if you're trying to communicate with your ancestors, with spirit. These are really good cards. They have been very helpful for me. Very confirmational when I've done some path working and come out and I pull a card and, or if I ask a question, has this been on my mind? And they will give me empowerment and strength through the messages in this card. So these are very good cards. I do recommend them. Postcards from Spirit. Uh, I also use the Hoodoo Tarot. I just start using these. And let me tell you how I use these. Because I think to it's important to explain that. Because these are new, 
I don't use them. They're not my go-to. Okay, they are more of a confirmational tool for me. These are my go-to, my ancestral uh, tarot. These are my go-to if I'm going to do a tarot reading uh, with my ancestors. I love the imagery in these cards. And I love the fact that this tarot, because it lets me know the energy, the archetypes and the energies that the ancestors are working with in my life or the energy or archetypes I'm working with in my life. So there's still archetypes in here. You get the high priestess, you get the eight of cups, you know, you get the cups in here. But what I like is the sacred circles. And every time I see the sacred circles, which represents the ancestors in this, this, this t ancestor tarot. See, I just love it. They let me know the more these cards come up and the ones as well. They, 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 and this, this all reminds me of the Egyptian Pantheon. So you'll have these ancient, uh, indigenous cultures and some of the most modern, which I call this, uh, when I look at the Egyptian Pantheon, because they, they perfected spiritualism to a metaphysical science, I always look at them as the modern, uh, spiritual trailblazers because the way they documented their spiritual experiences and knowledge, they really documented that for us to show, show us that spirituality could be a science and there are things to follow to help us develop spiritually. And this can impact us on a physical realm. So I love that that these comes up too. Uh, again, the sacred circles. When you are using the ancestral tarot and you see these come up more for me, that's certainly been like that for me, that comes up like that in my reading, I, I start to see just how in line that I am with my ancestors. I just love the, the sacred circles in here. And, and I love the fact that they look like me. I try to stick with cards uh, that look like me. I, that's just me. Uh, I, I think that's important, the imagery. Because I do creative visualization. I do path working. So it's important for me to have images that look like me. For me to get the communication that I need from my spiritual uh, contact, you know. So I just love, I love these. Again, these are archetypes in there. Archetypes in there. Uh, let me see. I love the ones, you know, like I said, the ones. Let me show you more of the ones. The cups and the swords in here are, uh, you have the cups being European that deals with emotions. Uh, you'll see that come up in here. So I thought that, that that's really something. Uh, you'll see more of the European look and the Asian look is going to be more of the swords dealing with the mind, the intellect. That's what the swords is dealing with. Uh, again, you'll get the comedic imagery. Again, you can tell when you're working close with the ancestors in there because you'll have these ones that start showing up. See this? It's the seven of wands, and you see this comedic or this ancient Egyptian temple that she's in. You see these Egyptian gods is this, and seven representing the a number of initiation of a spiritual alignment. I love this card too. Uh, and again, you see this Asian again, they, they have swords in here. You'll see, uh, the Asiatic, uh, culture here is going to be represented by the swords in here. So this may mean something else for an Asian person that was to get this. Maybe if they see this come up, they can see their ancestors in play because with this, with me, it's always the ones and the circles that I can see the ancestors, uh, usually come up in these cards. For me, okay? Like I said, I love some of the imagery. The imagery works better for me when it looks like me, 
Okay. And you see again. Again, you have this dark imagery when it comes to the stays, the ones, and these cards. Again, I, I love these cards. These are my go-to uh, when I am doing my ancestors read with myself, looking at the energy, the archetypes, how they're playing out in my life, and how the ancestors are helping me navigate this energy or using this energy uh, to improve my life. You see that? The sacred, you got this TP and this tent. You know, the sacred circle, the sacred circle we enter when we uh, commune with our ancestors. This is one of my favorite imageries as well. I have, this has been coming up a lot for me, having the ancestral mothers, the abuelo energy, abuela energy, um, you know, grandmother energy watching over us, you know, our ancestors watching over us. So you'll see a lot of that. Uh, imagery in these cards again love this energy this is the staves the ones when i see these cards come up in my reading i know that the ancestors are particularly using these energies to make progress in my life or, or shift bring some shifts or gifts into my life or blessings i just love the imagery and this is the ancestor tarot deck here you see, and uh, again, I, I I love these cards, and I just wanted you to see the imagery on here, and uh, just kind of share my experience with working with these tarot cards. And this is what I use for uh, any ancestor reading that I do. I'm usually going to use these cards to see what alignment, what is coming up for you and how close the ancestors are working with you in your life. Okay. So if I see those sacred circles uh, show up, if I see um, those ones show up, that's an indication to me. And that's how my ancestors communicate with me that your ancestors are working, how closely they are working with you. Okay, in your life. So if you're interested, I think I got these from Amazon, I think. I think they was from Ghana from Amazon. Not really sure where I got these from. But they was about $25 or $30, these uh ancestral uh path tarot. Really good cards. Now Usually, if you know I'm iffy about this or I'm confused about what's going on, uh, I'm like, oh, I want confirmation. I'm not really satisfied with that answer. Then I'll go to my Hoodoo Tarot. I like. I'm still getting used to this Hoodoo Tarot. I'm still getting used to the Hoodoo Tarot because of the archetypes that's being used in here. And that's why I uh, I only use this for confirmation for these cards because of the hoodoo archetypes that are in here. Uh, I have to get used to looking at those archetypes that's being used here. Some of the archetypes are familiar with me and they... Um, I really can connect with the archetypes. And then some of the archetypes for me is just like... I don't know because I really don't know that person and you're connecting this person to an archetype and I really didn't know that person. So maybe if I got a chance to, um, to connect with the archetypes and read more about the people that they're connecting with the archetypes, I could connect with these cards a little better, but they are really good cards as well. They're a little bit different than the tarot. It's definitely based on hoodoo. This is based on the hoodoo tarot is based on the, the con on hoodoo concepts be so it's going to read a little bit different from the regular tarot this doesn't read that much different from the regular tarot but when you're reading the hoodoo tarot it's going to read a little bit different a little bit different from the ancestral path tarot okay because we're looking at hoodoo concepts uh, when we're reading these cards 
Okay, so it, it may it's it's a, a different feel. And if you're a card reader, you know what I'm talking about. You know what I'm talking about. Each card has their own frequency and energy, and they talk to you in a different way. And this definitely talks you in the language of hoodoo. Okay, this they have uh, their own distinct uh, frequency with these. If if you're used to reading cards, you understand what I'm saying here. Okay, so. Uh, you have the Father of Sticks, which represents wands in the regular tarot. For so, for the most part, this this are gonna kind of be the same meaning uh, when it comes to that. You have the Son of Baskets, which the baskets in the Hoodoo Tarot represents the cup. So you're gonna be looking at motions emotions and sentiments and things of that such when you're messing with the hoodoo tarot again again the ten of baskets the ten representing the, the ten of cups in the regular tarot so that's that's pretty much the same now i'm gonna tell you where it gets iffy for me is when i start looking at this uh the arch types because they're different and here is called john horse now john horse in the regular tarot will be the chair chariot Okay, but now we're talking about revolutionaries. We're talking about personalities as archetypes. So connected with them will be a, a little bit different. So, but in the regular tarot, this would be the, the John Horse would be the chariot. Okay. I think I got that right. Okay. Uh, what's some other archetypes? you got the devil. Miss Robinson represents the devil. And in this type tarot, it, I just don't even really represent the devil. Uh, and especially in my experience when the ancestors was, because this star card was coming up for me a lot when I was with my husband. Okay, if this card is coming up for you, and it's been my experience of this card coming up for you, you got people that's gossiping about you, that's going up against you, that's creating hex energy on you, but you are being protected. They are not doing anything but hurting themselves every time they put their mouth on you. When you read the story of Miss Robin, and that is exactly what I was experiencing in my marriage, this card definitely kept coming up. If you get this card coming up in your in the Hoodoo Tarot, you better be sure. You better know you, you know for sure that you got some gossip, some backbiters, some gossipers behind your back that is not looking out for your best interest, and it's somebody close to you. Okay, if this coming up, this is the devil card. And it, again, like I said, these archetypes are a lot more. So it takes some getting used to because we're looking at the uh, the concepts, the ideology of um, of hoodoo. So, you know, like I'm kind of learn die and this in the regular terror, she represents the will of fortune. Okay. So, but in here, she's on Caroline Die, and she's taking on the archetype of Wheel of Fortune in this deck, in the hoodoo concept. So, uh, I forgot Duck, Dr. Buzzer, I think it's Justice, in this one. He's taking on the archetype of Justice, court cases, Okay. So uh, again, these are they are helpful cards, but for me, uh, you know, like Gullah Jack represents the hangman. You know, this is Gullah Jack. And can you see these? I don't know if you are this light probably missing things up, making you know. Again, the archetypes in here, uh, I think they're good cards, good for confirmation. I love, I like some of the archetypes, and some of the archetypes, um. I'm unsure about um, because again I'm learning the language of hoodoo and this was somebody's the person that created them this is somebody you know they're they have 
created a concept of hoodoo and, and managed it, turned it into a medium and using the archetypes of some of those ancestors who passed, passed away. So I need to study more about those archetypes that they're using that passed away. They're using for these archetypes. So I think that's what I need, uh, need to study. Uh, the grandchildren, uh, I think this is the, uh, the one that represents death, if I'm not mistaken. This one represents death, the grandchildren. No, death is the ancestors in this one. I forgot what this one was. I can't remember what this one was in the regular tarot. But yeah, so the archetypes will be a little bit more different. Some of the meanings will be a little bit more different. Um, you know, like I say, the archetypes are different. So you, you do, you come in contact with the most immediate ancestors of hoodoo when you're going to practice this, you know, so look at these cards like when you, when we, you use these, you're coming up with the ancestors of this, uh, the, the recent hoodoo. Okay, their concepts and their meanings, and they are they are can be accurate as well. I usually use these again when I want to confirm some information with these. Okay, and they're gonna these right here. They're gonna tell it like it is. They're gonna break it all the way down for you. Okay, but these are not my go-to because I'm still learning. Uh, more about the archetypes that are used with these cards. Okay, so the archetypes uh, are more ancestral with these, and learning more about those archetypes is really going to be beneficial if you're going to be used. These are going to be your go-to cards. Okay, so I hope that made sense to you. Uh, and these are called Hulu Tarot. I don't, I don't remember where I got these from. Maybe from Amazon as well. Um, but these are good to have too. Uh, I like to have many mediums because, again, ancestors is such a wide scope. It's more than just your immediate ancestors that you're going to be communicating with, you know. And, and depending on the ancestors, you might have to go to a variety of ancestors to get certain things done. Okay, uh, this was my go-to for a long time. I, 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 this was good. These were good. Angels and ancestors. These are good cards as well. These are more like oracle cards. These ancestors, I, they are more like uh, elemental ancestors that you have with you. Such as the fire, the water, uh, and then your star ancestors. Again, your soul came here. You have star ancestors that your soul came from to be incarnated in the land of the living ancestors that took you into your ancestor family to have this experience. Okay, so you have soul ancestors too, and you will con come in contact with these universal energies through these cards. Okay, uh, these are really good cards um, to figure out, you know, which one of these universal energies are, are moving in your life. If you want to get, you know, and these are going to be... Uh, more like ascended masters, uh, ancestors that had um, an archetype. So you're going to get some archetypes, ascended masters, uh, animal spirits. Uh, this is more of a shamanic ancestor reading for yourself. That's what I'm going to say with these cards, because you're going to come up with, with all these spirit guides and these star ancestors that's going to show up in these readings and kind of tell you how they're working in your life. So I like these as well. These are pretty accurate, especially when it comes to your energy and your healing and your evolution on your journey. These are really good cards as well. Uh, and I especially use these two. When I don't be feeling like being slapped around, 
you know, sometimes the ancestors can tell you stuff so raw and it hurts your feelings. And when I'm not really, really ready to get my feelings just really hurt right off the bat, then I'll pull some of these cards. You know, I need a, a, a message that is uh, just giving me the message. But giving me grace and mercy at the same time. So uh, these are good for that. And they are pretty accurate as well, especially when it comes to your healing, when it comes to the archetypes or the ascended master uh, ancestors or star ancestors or elemental ancestors that could be working around you right now. So tapping into that energy as well. So I like these cards as well. I don't use them as much now because I'm doing so much core healing. I don't go and use this until I feel like I've did a lot of healing. Then I, I'll, I'll do a checkup. It's basically what I do with these. I'll do a checkup uh, when I need to connect and do an overall checkup of what's going on, how my ancestors feeling, how my connection is doing. I'll do an overall checkup, and that is good for uh, that. So I like these cards for that. I like some of the imagery in these cards as well. Okay. And this is called uh, Angels and Ancestors, really good tarot cards. You've probably seen me talk about these, so they can be beneficial as well. Uh, but I like having many mediums because, again, you're dealing with different frequencies and different levels of ancestors. One of my favorites is the Earth Warriors. Okay, this is one of my favorite uh, cards. I love the imagery in here. Uh, this Central America, uh, I love the imagery in here. And this I do, I use these when I'm doing the healing. I connect with the land ancestors and I connect with the shamanic ancestors to the indigenous cultures, um, and those older animal, uh, helping spirits, you know, indigenous medicine. So, I mean, I love the earth warriors. They, uh, says the earth warriors, Oracle rise of the soul tribe of sacred guardians and inspire visionaries by Elena Fairchild. These are, I just love these cards. I love the imagery in here. And they bring a lot of healing. Each card has a healing prayer and a meditation with it. And I've, done, I've used these cards to do a lot of healing. Bringing a lot of medicine, spiritual medicine, conscious medicine. I mean, I just love them. I love the imagery, the symbols on here. The symbols are indigenous. Um... It's like indigenous cultures around the world. The most indigenous cultures. You see that abuela medicine, grandmother medicine, and you see how she looks. They usually dark skin, uh, dark skin images that look like me. I love the feel. I love the energy from this cards. I like the healing medicine that comes with with this card. Look at this medicine horse. Yeah, medicine horse. See, I just love the imagery in these cards. And it really, and that's the important thing too, is getting, getting imagery that reflects you, that looks like you. I think that's important. Being able to connect with those ancestors, you know. And like I said, I'm always connected with the ancestors here. That You know, I respectfully are connected with the ancestors here on this land. That's how it's been working for me. Uh, and I've went out and I've uh, worked with the Orisha when it comes to doing ancestral healing. Like I just love the imagery in these cards. I just wanted to show you. Totemic Puma. You know, I just wanted to show you a lot of this imagery in these cards. I mean, it's just so beautiful. It really comes through. The indigenous cultures really come through. So if you're interested, you know, and that's been because I do creative visualization, I do path working. 
um, and a lot of these images come up in my path working. I've had these images come up in my path working. These images to reveal that stuff in my path working. You know, the ancestors have come to me in some of these images. That's what's important to me. And you can use some of these images in your path working. You can take this in your meditation path working, which I'm going to be talking about that in the, in the coming weeks. We're going to talk about path working. Um, and hopefully I can get a workshop on path working to really show you how to use it uh, to help you heal, help you communicate with your ancestors. See, I like some of these symbols. I love these symbols. I love the symbols in here. Very indigenous, and uh, I've used a lot of this in path working and meditation, visualization. I'm going to show you how to use, um, you know, hopefully, I can get a course going, kind of showing you how to use some of this. Um, this stuff, these images for path working on your journey. And it, it has really good benefits. You will improve your spirit communication. Okay, another one of my favorite cards, I, I, I think I talked about this yet, is these cards. Okay, these are my favorite cards as well. I think I already talked about these, but... Uh, usually, when I finish doing my readings on all these, this is this is the final card I pull to give me confirmation for my reading, and they never fail me. They always confirm the reading when I get this postcard, postcard from Spirit. These cards, they are wonderful as well, confirming uh, your reading. If you want to get more uh, details in your reading and you want them to just, you know, tell you flat out what's going on, and hey, these cards are good as well. Postcard from Spirit. Another thing that I've been doing uh, where well, I've moved to now, you can also use pendulums. You can always use pendulums and dowsing rods to get uh, to communicate with your ancestors. Some people use pendulums as well. You know, if they want yes or no, maybe questions, answers from their ancestors, you can also use that as well. Again, this is a practice. You should be documenting all your findings, all your readings. Everything should be documented. Okay. We always want to test spirit and see how accurate the information that we are receiving from spirit. Okay, again, this is a system. This is a science. This is a practice. Okay, so we want to document our, our science and how accurate it is. Uh, so I've been uh, using these dowsing rods here lately communicating with my ancestors and I've had some profound experience with this. I've just been blown away. It was very creepy at first when I start using this to communicate with my ancestors, but it has improved the communication that I have with them. Uh, it's something I, I they instantly uh, inject give me feelings. I can get these intense feelings and get these images downloaded in my head a lot more quicker when I'm talking to them. You know, the conversation, the mediumship, it, it just, I don't know. Uh, when I come in contact using these dowsing rods, maybe because copper is a conductor uh, for other energies, I'm able to communicate with them more personally with the yes and no's. Sometimes I can feel the yes and no's before they even happen. Or when I ask the question, I can already see images forming in my head using the dowsing rods. OK, but I also write down every question and I test every spirit, you know, that I'm communicating with. I ask, are you an ancestor? Are you a man or woman? Are you on my mother's side or my father's side? That's something um, I've been having ancestors from my father's side to come through and speak to me uh, with the dowsing rod. I had a 
wild experience last night using these dials and rods because someone came through on my father's side and my father's been dead uh he's passed away when i was nine and i'm he's been dead for over 40 years so yeah i i uh I communicate a lot of the, that my father's family members on my father's side, the patriarchs or the paternal side, uh, comes through on uh, that side, you know. So they have been communicating uh, with me. Uh, and I, it's very creepy at first starting to use this. It's very creepy for me uh, to start testing them because they move and they're so accurate. I didn't expect it to work that well with dials and rods, but these, this was a profound experience, um, that I use as well. So I use this on the side of my tarot cards and it, I can definitely see it improving my mediumship using these. So I've been doing my tarot readings. And then after that, I do I've been doing a thousand rods. Uh, I, I never, I've never, I tried the pendulum before, but I've never really liked the pendulum. I don't know why a pendulum it just, it wasn't a good feel for me. You know, for you, a pendulum might work great for you. You know, you may not like the dials and rods, but I wanted to come here and give you options. If you've got your ancestors altar up and you know, you're doing again, this is for nobody who's a beginner. This is for uh, uh, those of us who are well on our journey. We have our altar up and we're trying to increase our spiritual power and stamina. And we're trying to develop our mediumships, uh, you know, we're trying to sharpen our mediumship skills when it comes to communicating with our ancestors. If you fall in that category, then this video is for you. You know, I want to uh, probably start creating a course when it comes to mediumship because that's where... A lot of your connection and communication is going to come from with your ancestors is the mediumship and developing that mediumship and trusting that mediumship and uh, knowing how to read the signs on your altar. You know what things mean, mean and what you uh, you should be alerted if something you know rare is happening on your altar or you know what type of hoodoo practices is going to be easy for you to implement uh to help you start working with your ancestors you know so i'm trying to develop something like that for all of us that are growing and that you know we say hey we want to adopt uh a closer spiritual practice to work with our ancestors you know so yeah uh, I hope this video was insightful for you and it helped you and gave you some ideas of the things that you could be doing to amplify your work, to evolve you and take you to the next level when it comes to working with your ancestors. You know, you're definitely going to see a difference. You know, uh, and I'll talk about some more things. You know, you let me know what you want to talk about. But I thought it was very helpful to come here and talk about, you know, you got your ancestors all to up what you should be doing. You should be doing the shadow work, the ancestral karma or healing work. You, know, you heard me talk about the Know Thyself course that I had going on, helping you do a lot of trauma work, helping you do a lot of behavior work, helping you. Uh, get control of your thoughts and emotions. That's what the Know Thyself course is about. Uh, I have uh, plenty of um, spiritual baths on my website to help you get your energy field back in balance, whether it's a crown of success, a white bath, uh, a cut and clear bath, uh, a uncrossing bath. You know, I have those things uh, on available on my website if you're trying to get your energy together before you even start doing hoodoo work. Uh, I'm going to recommend that you, you know, make sure that you're doing a lot of uncrossing work, a lot of healing work before you even dive in trying to do uh, any of the other work, you know. 
Again, this is called working. You might have to do it days in a row. You might have to do some egg cleansing days in a row before you can go on to do uh, any type of prosperity work or road opening work. Doing that work and being consistent with it or doing that healing work. So I hope this video, you found it helpful. It was beneficial. It was insightful to you. And thank you so much for being here with me today. And uh, hopefully I can come back here and talk really more about path working. That way you can really see some changes in your life using your meditation and your shamanic ability to communicate with your ancestors. Thank you for being here with me today. Light, love, namaste, ashe, love one.